As promised in a previous video, we're going to be proving Lobachevsky's integral formula, which states that if you have the integral from 0 to infinity of sine x by x times f of x dx, where f of x satisfies certain criteria, and that criteria is that f of x is an even function of x, so f of x equals f of negative x. And the second criteria needing to be satisfied is f needs to be pi periodic, meaning that f of x plus k times pi plus or minus k times pi equals f of x. So if you have a function satisfying these two conditions, then the integral sorts out to that from 0 to pi by 2 of f of x with respect to x. And there's another fascinating variation of this where, once again, we need f to be an even function of x. But there's a different sort of periodicity here, a sort, a sort of um, alternating periodicity where f of x plus pi equals negative f of x. And you can generalize this by saying that f of k times pi equals negative 1 to the k times f of x. And in this case, the integral evaluates to that from 0 to pi by 2. Oh, terribly sorry about that. Uh, much better. The integral from 0 to pi by 2 of f of x times the cosine of x dx. And I'm going to prove both these results, starting off with the case highlighted in white. So starting off with the first case, that is the case where f of x is pi periodic, let's call i the integral from 0 to infinity of sine x by x times f of x. And because sine x by x is an even function, and we can verify this by replacing x by negative x, we know that the sine is an odd function, so we have negative sine x by negative x, which sorts out to sine x by x. So yeah, this is an even function, as is f of x. So we can write this as one half of the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity. And now I'm going to deconstruct this integral on the real line. And what I mean by that is first up noticing that the integral from negative to positive infinity equals the integral from negative infinity to 0 plus the integral from 0 to positive infinity. And we can break this down even further by noticing that we can write the integral from 0 to infinity as that from 0 to pi by 2. Sorry about that the integral from 0 to pi by 2, plus the integral from pi by 2 to pi, plus the integral from pi to 3 pi by 2, and so on and so forth, where we've broken down the right half of the real line into intervals of length pi by 2. In similar fashion, the integral from negative to infinity, from negative infinity to 0, is equal to the integral from uh, negative pi by 2 to 0 plus the integral from negative pi to negative pi by 2 plus the integral from negative uh, 3 pi by 2 to negative pi and so on and so forth. And because we're interested in the integral from negative to positive infinity, which is the sum of these two integrals, on adding both these structures, we see that we can combine these two integrals into a single one from negative pi by 2 to positive pi by 2. And this is an integral of uh, over an interval of length pi. And in similar fashion, all the other integrals can be written as integrals over an interval of length pi as well. For example, if you combine these two integrals here, then you get the integral from pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2. In similar fashion, we can write this integral here, the sum of integrals, as the integral from negative um, 3 pi by 2 to negative pi by 2. And you have these additions going on towards the left and the right side of your integral in the center, uh, this one from negative to positive pi by 2. And so we've expressed the integral from negative to positive infinity as an infinite series of integrals over intervals of length pi. So this implies that you can write i as a sum, a sum over k of the integrals from, let's see, taking this integral in the middle as our reference, 
um, if we have k being equal to 0, we should have negative pi by 2 and positive pi by 2. So let's take the lower limit as k minus 1 half times pi and the upper limit as k plus 1 half times pi. And if you want the integrals towards the right, you need k to be positive. And if you want the integrals towards the left, you need k to be negative. So that means we're summing over all the integers k. And we're summing over k, these integrals from k minus 1 half times pi to k plus 1 half times pi of sine x by x times f of x, integration with respect to x, of course. Next up, we're going to perform a substitution by letting x equal t plus k times pi. Now, this implies that dx equals dt, and it also implies that as x approaches k minus 1 half of pi times pi, t approaches negative pi by 2. And for the case of k plus 1 half times pi, we have t approaching pi by 2. So this implies that i now equals the sum over k of the integral from negative pi by 2 to positive pi by 2 of sine of t plus k times pi divided by t plus k times pi times f of t plus k times pi dt. And because f is pi periodic, we're just left with f of t. Okay, cool. Now when we switch up the order of the integration and the summation operators, we have the integral from negative to positive pi by 2 of the sum over k of sine. Now the sine term here evaluates out to negative 1 to the k times the sine of t. So yeah, that's exactly what you get. Um, times this negative 1 to the k term divided by t plus k times pi times f of t dt. Now notice that the f of t term as well as the sine of t term, these two are independent of the k variable with respect to which you're, uh, you're performing the sum. So you have the integral from negative to positive pi by 2, and you can just slip these two outside of the summation operator. So you have f of t times the sine of t times the sum over k of negative 1 to the k divided by t plus k times pi integration with respect to t. And in a previous video, I proved that this here equals the cosecant function. Link in the description below. So we have the integral from negative to positive pi by 2 of f of t times sine t times the cosecant of t dt. And before we perform that lovely cancellation of the sine and the cosecant functions, I need to point out that I forgot something. Yeah, I forgot something very important. It was this factor of 1 half, so I only wrote it out in the start. And after that, I forgot it even existed. So it was up here and then followed us all the way up to here. Okay, cool. And this was our integral i. Now, the sine and the cosecant cancel out and we're left with one half of the integral from negative to positive pi by 2 of f of t with respect to t. And because f is an even function, we can treat this integral as twice the integral from 0 to pi by 2, and the 2's cancel out nicely as well. So this implies that the integral from 0 to infinity of sine x by x times f of x equals the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the function f of x with respect to x. What about the case where the function f of x is not exactly pi periodic, but a sort of um, alternating, there's an alternating sort of periodicity for uh, with the function f. So what about this case? Well, even right now, we can write i as one half of the integral from negative to positive infinity of sine x by x f of x. And even right now, we can write this as one half of the sum over k of the integral from k minus one half of pi times pi times k plus one half times pi of sine of x divided by x times f of x dx. So yeah, it's pretty much uh, the same stuff up till here. And now once we perform the substitution where we let x equal t plus k times pi, 
then i transforms into one half the sum over k of the integral from negative to positive pi by two and the sine term evaluated out to negative one to the k times sine t and f of t plus k times pi was negative one to the k times f of t and all of this is being divided by t plus k times pi integration with respect to t okay cool so once again we see that uh, when we perform the switch up of the integration and the summation operators we have a couple of terms that are independent of k so we can take them out of the summation and we have the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times negative 1 to the k divided by t plus k times pi dt and this is just negative 1 to the k squared and 1 squared as well as negative 1 squared is just 1, right? So we can replace all of this stuff by a 1 and in the same video I linked in the description below uh, this evaluated out to the cotangent function. So we have 1 half the integral from negative pi by 2 to positive pi by 2 f of t times sine t times the cotangent of t. Now the cotangent of t is the cosine of t divided by the sine of t. So again you have some lovely cancellation uh, happening here and this implies that i which is the integral from 0 to infinity of sine x by x times f of x dx equals okay cool so you have f of x f of t times the cosine of t and f of t and cosine of t are both even functions so again you can perform that even function trick and just integrate from 0 to pi by 2 so this integral equals the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of f of x times the cosine of x where once again we've renamed the dummy variable back to x anyway i hope you enjoyed the video be sure to like and subscribe thank you see you next time